two months ago, I was sent this lens. And in a recent video, I hailed it as an engineering marvel, a lens that was in a category of its own. There really was no comparable lens on the market like this one. And if you wanted to get images like the ones that came out of this lens, this was the lens for you. And even though the lens had been released like two years ago, almost nobody knew it existed. And in the video, in the comments, a lot of people really questioned if this was like a real thing, if this lens was actually a full frame lens. But yes, it is. And then before I even released that video, I was sent this lens, which is a lens that kind of promises to do the same thing that the other lens does, but for a little bit less money. And before the comment section gets full of people saying, it's just the same lens, they've just rebranded it. It's actually not the same lens. It has a completely different optical path, has different elements in different groups, different minimum focus distance. It's a completely different engineered lens. But I can't help but think that the first lens is what has inspired the second lens. And both of these lenses are nine millimeter F5.6 rectilinear full frame lenses. And when I say rectilinear, I mean that the lines are reasonably straight and these are non fisheye lenses. I also mean that it's not rectum linear, like a few people have said in the comments, rectilinear, rectilinear, rectum linear. And for most people, I think this focal length represents the last focal length that you should look at investing in if you've got a full frame kit. And that's because it is such a specific use case lens. So I think you really want to have your entire kit filled out before you move on and you start looking at a nine millimeter full frame lens. But I think there are a lot of people that will get to that point where they do have their standard wide angle lenses that sort of satisfy all their needs and they are looking to do something different. And I think at that point, this lens makes a lot of sense. And it does have a number of both creative and practical uses. And to start with, the thing that I think this thing is fabulous for is walk around travel when you're in a city, historic buildings, any time that you have a wraparound environment and a normal lens is just not going to get you that full feel of the environment wrapping around you, I think the 9mm focal length is absolutely great for that. And I think particularly in whether it be art galleries or modern art, uh, modern buildings with really interesting architecture or historic churches is another one. It gets you that sort of immersive feel. You feel like you're sucked into the image. You truly get a wraparound feel with nine millimeters that you just aren't going to get with a standard 15, 16 millimeter focal length. And when you are in those environments, what you're going to find is there's a heck of a lot of contrast in those scenes because you're getting so much of the scene in, it's almost impossible to compose an image where you don't have some very, very bright parts of that image and some very, very dark parts of that image. And what I've been finding with this nine millimeter focal length is that it works really well for black and white photography. And I think I probably prefer it as a black and white lens, even over a color lens. So I think it's absolutely a perfect black and white lens for a number of different situations, but particularly those historic cities, historic buildings, modern art galleries, modern architecture. The next use I see for it is a practical one, and that is real estate photography. Now, it's important that I should qualify. I think this should be used in a very limited way on a very limited basis, and you wouldn't want to do an entire real estate shoot with this lens because it distorts the proportions of the rooms so much that they look absolutely enormous. And if somebody sees that on the internet, on a brochure, and then they come in, the place is gonna look a heck of a lot smaller than this lens actually makes it look. But there are some specific situations, generally tight areas. This could be sort of a, a pantry or a walk-in cupboard or a walk-in closet or a small bathroom where this lens is going to allow you to get the environment. It is absolutely going to distort it and make it look bigger than what it is. But it's going to allow you to actually take a photo of that and display it when essentially no other lens would do so. And I think you can forgive that sort of uh, exaggerated proportions, making the room look so much bigger than it is in those limited number of situations where this is the only lens that's going to allow you to take a photo of the room. So I think for those specific uses in real estate, I think this is a worthy lens. The other place I see this lens useful for is landscape photography, but not the traditional landscape photography that you're probably thinking. I think it works well as a wraparound 
background environment lens for something like caves or cliff faces or even forests where you want that immersive image, that wraparound image, similar to the style of image that we're getting when we're in these historic buildings, churches, what have you, that wraparound image. But when we're looking at general landscape where we've got a foreground, mid-ground, and something off in the distance, this really stretches the image so much that the things off in the distance are going to look very, very small. The things near to you are going to be distorted and stretched towards the lens. So I did find it quite hard to use in that more generic, general purpose landscape photography that you probably are thinking of. So I think it is a landscape lens purely for immersive environments. And when you're shooting at a 9mm focal length, one thing that you're really going to have to watch for is distracting edges because as the image gets closer to the edge of frame, it really, really gets crazy stretched. And if you put something on the uh, edge of frame that's going to draw the viewer's eye and it's going to be all distorted, it actually ruins the entire image. So when taking a photo with this lens, what you're really trying to do to create that immersive look is create a, an outline or almost a framing around the outside of the frame that forms a frame for what is more in the middle of the frame and what you're focusing on. If you've got any subject on the edge of the frame and it's stretched, it's essentially going to, to ruin the image. So even though it is a nine millimeter lens, you probably want to keep all the things that people are looking at within a field of view that's more like 11, 12 millimeters, maybe even tighter, something like that. And then that exterior, that outside of the frame, which is really stretched, just uh, creates that more immersive feel when you're looking at the image. This is obviously a full frame lens. It comes on all the popular mirrorless mounts. You're gonna get it on E mount, RF mount, L mount, or Z mount. And I will put some links to all the different mounts it's available on, as well as the current pricing in the description down below. At the time of shooting this video, it's not even available for sale yet. So once I publish the video, we should have some links available for final pricing and purchase. Looking at the lens itself, it is an all metal lens. It even has a metal lens cap, which slides on and off. It's based on a metal lens mount, and it is a clicked aperture ring, which is actually nice and smooth and quite satisfying. Is that ASMR? I'm not sure if it is, maybe. And then we've got a really smooth focus ring. Importantly, this is an all manual focus, manual aperture lens, and you are unable to use filters with it because you can see that massive bulbous front element and there's no place to thread a filter on. Taking a look at image quality, you are gonna get a bit of barrel distortion with this lens. You are gonna get more distortion with this Seven Artisans lens than you are with the Laowa lens that I previously reviewed. It's not terrible and there are going to be some corrections in Lightroom. The lens does have reasonably heavy vignette and I think the vignette performance is worse than what it was on the Laowa lens. Now, once again, the Lightroom profile that will be released will correct all that, so it's not sort of a problem there. But if you're shooting JPEGs right out of a camera or if you're shooting video, you are going to have some pretty he heavy vignette to do deal with. Looking at chromatic aberration, I think it is surprisingly well controlled actually, and zooming in with super high contrast areas, there probably is a little bit of purple fringing, but on a global level in any normal situation, I don't think you're going to notice it at all, and it can be corrected in Lightroom with one click. Now, longitudinal chromatic aberration is where you get the color fringing on out of focus areas before and after the plane of focus, because this lens doesn't have a very close minimum focus distance, and you you don't really get much of an out of focus area in the background or the foreground. Really, it's a non-issue, so I couldn't see any, but it's kind of irrelevant with this lens. Looking at the flare performance in the lens, it's neither good nor bad. It's probably middle of the road. I would say that I wish it was a little bit better, but I often see with these big bulbous front elements on lenses, it is something that is a bit of a challenge. So I think it's sort of a mediocre performance. I don't think it's a deal breaker by any means, but it probably could be a little bit better. Looking at minimum focus distance, the minimum focus isn't any anywhere near as close as what the Laowa lens is, and that was kind of its kind of up its sleeve superpower. So you're not gonna get that almost pseudo macro virtually touching the thing close up minimum focus. But when you do use the close focus on this lens, the details are sharp and they are good. You just don't get quite as close to your subject as you do with the Laowa lens. Looking at sharpness, I was afraid that that's where this lens would really fall short compared to the Laowa lens, but actually it was quite sharp, and I, and I think it is quite similar to the Laowa lens. Now, I wasn't able to shoot a test chart with this and I didn't shoot the lenses side by side. So
so please don't take this as a definitive answer. But when I looked at the images out of this, I certainly thought that they were plenty sharp. And it didn't make me wish that I had a lens that was sharper. I should also say that with lenses like this, it's very difficult to test sharpness with test charts because you need to have huge test charts to actually properly test a wide angle lens, even and lenses that aren't anywhere near as wide as this. So I'm not exactly sure how you would do a side-by-side -side sharpness test, probably have to take it out in the real world and shoot a billboard or something like that. But when it comes to sharpness, I thought this was more than sharp enough. And I really, even zooming into pixel level, I never thought, oh, this lens isn't sharp enough. And when we look at both Bokeh, there isn't a whole lot of bokeh to speak of, but when you get as close as you can at the minimum focus distance of this lens, which isn't super close, you can get a slightly out of focus background and the slightly out of focus background that you get is smooth and looks good and there's no jagged distracting edges. So I think the bokeh that you do get out of this lens is nice and pleasing. So ultimately I have to ask, who is this lens for? And to start with, I'll say, this absolutely should not be your first wide angle lens. I think you want to have at least one, maybe even two lenses before you buy this lens. I also think you need to be somebody who already knows that you love wide angle photography or wide angle video, and you feel like you are mastering or you've gone as far as you could with the lenses that you already have. I think this lens introduces a unique creative element and a photography challenge that you simply aren't going to get with those other lenses. But it is not a lens that does everything well. It is absolutely a creative choice lens for photographers that already love wide angle photography. In this video, I talked a lot about the obvious comparisons between the Lau lens and the Seven Artisans lens. And if you want to see my review of that Lau lens, I've just thrown that on screen now. And because these are both nine millimeter focal lengths, a lot of the things that I talk about as far as the creative aspects and the image quality and what you're going to get when you use a nine millimeter lens, you're going to find in that video as well. 